Panoramical is an audiovisual experience. It is not a game. There are no achievements. There are no bosses. There are no XPs or HPs or any of the other Ps. It is just an experience. You get in, you hold down a key on your keyboard, you move your mouse around, it moves a slider X and Y, and that will dynamically change the music that you're listening to and the environment that you are seeing. It is a very cool concept that I feel probably could have been gamified a little bit to make it kind of tell a story, but unfortunately it didn't happen. I'll rant about that much later on in the episode. But one reason why I'm playing this one-year-old game here for you guys uh, is because I was excited about getting in and using uh, my MIDI keyboard to play a game and that did not happen except for one time and I'm so happy I caught it for you guys because it was a lot of fun. I did enjoy it. I feel like I did. I, I feel like I created this very cool environment and, and kind of experience. Uh, that'll be the first thing that we talk about here and I'll show you that. After that, the game crashed and every single time I try to relaunch it and get back in in order to use using my MIDI keyboard, it kept on crashing. And that pisses me off because the game's a year old and by now there should have been a fix for it. Do not advertise a game that says you support MIDI when the damn thing crashes every time you try to use it. It's USB MIDI. It's, it's, it's been around for freaking ever. The cable, I had to dig out the cable. It was covered in dust. This cable is like freaking 18 inches long. It probably cost me $30 freaking 20 years ago. Did I mention this game was supposed to be soothing and meditative? All right, here we are in Panoramical. This is the settings that we're gonna show. This is actually super important. Uh, I, as you see, I have it on the highest settings. Uh, I have it on full screen, uh, but for some reason it does not lock to the uh, to the screen for some reason. Uh, and then you have interface, which we're gonna leave on just so you guys can actually see what it is that I'm doing. It's super important. Uh, unlock all scenes, reset progress, all that. I've already actually unlocked all scenes by going through and playing the, the experience, experiencing the experience, if you will. Uh, so we have all those unlocked. We can kind of jump into a couple of them and see what they're like. Uh, we have configured controls. So this is actually the most interesting part. Uh, we have gamepad. Uh, we have keyboard and mouse. And as you guys saw, we have MIDI controller. Uh, I have my USB Oxygen 49. If you want to Google it to see what it looks like, it's basically a 49 key keyboard that has a number of sliders and knobs uh, on it. So this thing requires, because there's XY for every, uh, every part of the 3x3 grid, you have to control, you have, you need that many different options. Uh, you can't use a modifier, unfortunately, to switch between them, which I think they should probably add, uh, especially for those of us who are gonna be using a, uh, a controller in order to, to access this. Not every controller has, you know, <laughs> 18 pots available to it. Uh, it's just not something that uh, is, is available on most keyboards. So as a matter of fact, uh, again, the top row here, so horizontal for all of them is controlled by sliders. Uh, you can see as I move them around, you can see that's actually what's happening, you can actually hear, me moving them up and down. Uh, and then over here on the bottom, that's all the different pots. So those are all controlled there. And then here's the thing, I only have eight pots. So I get to the end, right over here at number eight. And then what's number nine? Well, number nine, I made basically the mod wheel, which is kind of like right next to the pitch bend wheel. So kind of like, yeah, like I'm just playing it right. And then I have to hit a key, uh, one of the keys on the keyboard basically to advance uh, for the advance option, which I'm probably, I could probably use the keyboard for that too. So, uh, so that's it. So we're set up, we are good to go. Uh, we have a snapshots gallery. I've not taken any snapshots because the option was there to whoops kick me out of the game here All right, so that's it the game kicked me out for a minute, but uh, we're, we're, we're good That's really strange. I think I was trying to open up another window for the share function So let's go back to the snapshots here so you can take a look at it uh, So yeah, they have the share function I haven't taken any snapshots because I just I knew that was probably ultimately would be what share this picture of crazy uh, polygons and vertices and colors and weirdness going on to people who wouldn't get it. <laughs> you have to experience I'm sharing with you the best way I know how and the best way I feel like you're gonna get it across with this game. Uh, you have the option to do video as well, but I've not experimented with that, so feel free to check it out for yourself if you'd like. So let's get into the actual menu here. Uh, and we can see that we can choose between a number of different themes, right? We're actually going to go into the the second one here because it's an actual song, I think. Well, the first one's the intro. It's going to play like an intro part and all that stuff. So we're going to jump into this one here. He's going to actually give it to me. Let me see. There we go. Let it load up. It's going to do its crazy, weird, fractal bizarreness. And then here we are. Whenever you're ready, hold the transition key to advance. Okay, so 
I'm going to do a lot of kind of twiddling around, and I'll just kind of comment every once in a while whenever I feel like something's worth noting. But for the most part, this is going to be just chill, relax, and listen. That's kind of the, the point of this, uh, even though I have gripes about some of the uh, uh, some of the sounds not really being being a little too random. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about more of that more of that in a second. So let's go ahead and actually... Oh, the keyboard doesn't work now. Oh, that's hilarious. I guess the crash took it out. Well, that's unfortunate. Let's go back and see if it's still hooked up. Computer controls, keyboard and mouse. It's on. Is it saved? Let's see. We're good. We're all good. All right. That was just, it was just a random thing. Let's go and actually reset everything back to zero here. Okay, we're good. Woo, that was a close one. Great. Oh, and I was like, I'm not going to reset this whole damn thing. Okay. So, lower left corner, you can see the grid. This is where you normally would do KWASD and ZXC in order to, you hold that down and you move the mouse around in order to move the XY. Uh, I'm using the sliders and the knobs here. So, actually, let me just show you here from the beginning. Let's first just go vertical. We have a piano line. That seems to be... A little random, a little, a little sporadic. It's playing, it's definitely playing a couple keys here, but there's a lot of kind of random kind of transients and everything going on. It's very nice, very pretty. Now, if I were to slide it over to the right now. It's slowly fading in what sounds like another synth, like a 303 that's playing in the same key and also playing, uh, just almost, it almost sounds random, but if you listen to it, it's definitely playing something. A little all over the place though. This goes, this, we'll stick with the piano. Let's stick with the piano. Now let's grab the next one here. Let's see what that is. We'll raise this one up. Notice that the screen changes as well. Now we're gonna move to the right. So it seems like the notes are basically playing uh, a sequence at a certain speed and a certain pitch range. And as I move it up and down here, or right right and left here, we're kind of moving back and forth along that. So this is lower in the range for those little blips, right? Much higher, see? And as you see the, the spastic behavior of the little firefly things there. Okay, so I think you guys get it, right? Now let's go ahead and grab all the sliders that I have left and let's move them up, see what happens. It goes to the right. Actually, let's bring those down. We're gonna roll the knobs. Here. All right, so you guys get the gist, right? Uh, 
a lot there's there's a number of things here i so i i'm I, i'm enjoying myself i'm not gonna lie i am enjoying myself doing this uh, i feel like the sounds are great uh, i'm actually currently writing an ambient album right now uh this is very inspiring to me for sure uh there's a lot of ways that they kind of introduce again these different transients and these different sounds and everything although i do feel like in some of the scenes uh if i can find one for you we go down the space bar here and then uh, it'll pull us out some of the scenes, it gets, it gets a little, it's a little too, a little noisy. Um, like, some of the things don't quite work. It's almost like, you know, you write a song that has, oh, it died. All right, so we're going to do one more, uh, uh, one more scene, because what's happening is the game is actually crashing when I use the, uh, the USB MIDI synth that... I described for the first scene. Uh, thankfully, we were able to get that first scene out of the way because that was actually a lot of fun. I, again, I really enjoyed myself doing that uh, and, and, and kind of playing around with that. Uh, but that was because I had hardware, right? Like now I have to use the, you know, QWESD ZXZ, you know, grid uh, on the keyboard in order to continue, you know, doing all these things. And it's not, it's nowhere near as fun as using a keyboard. So it's kind of, it's it kind of sucks. You know, it advertises, hey, you can use, you know, MIDI for this. Uh, it's just gonna crash every time you use it. <laughs> so if you're somebody like me who has a MIDI keyboard lying around that you'd like to plug in to play this game, just wait until the developer uh, says something about it. Um, maybe we'll get lucky and he'll comment on this and we'll see. Uh, so, let's talk about the other scenes. Uh, as I showed you at the beginning before the intro here, they, uh, some of the scenes are very messy and they make just kind of a lot of noise uh, and it's very difficult to really kind of get anything, any kind of real mel melody out of it, right? Uh, others are actually really good, uh, and like the first one I showed you, which is this one here, uh, while I had this like weird transient like melodies that kind of just play random stuff, seemingly random stuff, uh, it actually still ultimately works. Uh, let's see, what's another one that... I think it was this one. This one was pretty good. Man, I really wish I could use, I really wish I could use my synth for this, my MIDI synth. Okay, so once again, here we are. You start with nothing. This will be the last scene that I show you guys here. I don't want to spoil the whole thing for you. <laughs> All right, here we go.
That's a really ugly sound. That's it. The smash ball, see what happens. Why? Why? Why six key max? Why six key max? Let's see what happens. <laughs> so let me get something going here. Something chill. So I can talk. I hate that sound. Look at that. See, stuff like that? You don't need that. It just breaks it. It just breaks it. just breaks the mood. There we go. Alright, so my final thoughts on Panoramical. It is a very unique experience game, similar to like Proteus, as I've mentioned, uh, which is probably my favorite game that is a uh, kind of interactive uh, melody type scenario, because that, that also includes, and it's a different experience altogether, really. Uh, that is a, it's also a 3D experience where you have an environment, uh, but you have basically walk around on an island and different areas do different things and have different sounds. It's very, very peaceful. Uh, and this, you know, it's supposed to be very meditative, uh, and it's supposed to be very soothing and whatnot. Uh, some things can be a little crazy, like for example, that sound that I was playing for you. I mean, I think I know what it's trying to do, uh, what, what effect it's trying to put on the sound that we're hearing. Uh, I feel, that, but I feel like it's unnecessary. But you know, as a musician, it's like I could be—I feel like I'm being critical from my perspective, right? Uh, I, some whoever created this piece. Uh, whoever created this algorithm for this song and for this these different layers, uh, that to them is, it works, okay? So I'm not going to criticize that person's taste. I just don't like it. <laughs> uh, but here's the thing. I know this game's not, not for everybody. I, I, I absolutely agree. It's not for everybody. Uh, once the mini implement implementation is fixed, then I feel like it'd be a whole lot of a much better experience. Uh, I also feel like it's a missed opportunity for something more. Uh, you know, like you have this this three by three grid, uh, and I'm thinking about a way to kind of game this thing. You know, like there could have been a story here. Uh, there could have been something with the scenes right now the scenes just feels like it's just randomly generated well not random because everyone has a fixed scene but just different things that react to the x and y and they're just exaggerated based off of that and they just stretch off to like make funky characters right uh or just diff different weird you know things like for example this piece here right but i don't feel like this thing uh reflects what it is that i'm hearing so for me, and this could just be personal preference, when this goes up, it gets louder. That's me, right? Okay, you go up, you get loud, okay? You go up, you get loud. And then when you start to spread, that to me, when you say spread, I feel like it should be wider in my ears, right? Like it should be, maybe it's like it increases the stereo spread of the item. I feel like the actual, the, the stuff that we see is unfortunately not reflective of uh, the music that you're hearing. 
right? If I see sp stars or something, then I, I expect to hear like sparkly sounds, you know? Uh, if I see giant mountains, I, I would expect to hear, you know, bass, you know, like some kind of, not, and I don't mean like a bass line or something like that, but just something like droning and very low. Uh, and that's not what I, what I get. Uh, turning this thing into a game, telling a story with it, like basically I would say, and this is personal preference here, in that three by three grid, as we go and we find these different areas that maybe, uh, maybe reflect uh, a certain scene that you want to draw, right? Uh, and who knows what it could be? It could be anything, right? Just just pick something. It, it basically we'll see an environment or something that we recognize as a scene that has a tone to it. Um, finding those will unlock will basically be like the win essentially like that's the you found the end of this you know scene uh this is the and the music would reflect that too because it would be this is the way the artist intended this song to sound right uh i think it's interesting i think it's an interesting concept because then in terms of like the the music and everything i just feel like we could have taken it a step farther uh, imagine getting to the end you beat all you know all the levels in the game or you 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 find the the artist intention piece part or settings for each area and you see a scene that that goes with it uh and then you get to you know the end and you have a you know special level you play i don't know whatever like give me a goal or maybe like a kind of a wrap-up story or something like that like there's there's potential here. There's so much potential here. Uh, but right now, it's like, here's what it is. It's a visual, it's a, it's a win-amp visualization that you could control with your keyboard. Uh, and that's ultimately what it ends up being because there's nothing else behind it that I could see. It's neat in concept. It's not for everybody. And if MIDI worked, it'd be a whole lot more fun. Um, but unfortunately, that's not the case. So I would only suggest this for people who... Uh, who have a MIDI keyboard like me and want to plug it in, give it a shot only after it's fixed. But that's it. So that's it. My name is Mike BAK Phony. This is Andy for Breakfast. The game's called Panoramical. You can pick it up on Steam for $9.99. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.